Hello, CBCS. Welcome back to the Chapel Podcast. My name is Anastasia Davi. I'm the Community Life Prefect here on campus. And today we are joined with Brandon Hendricks as our speaker. He is the president and CEO of Every Generation Ministry. It is a global ministry that partners with churches around the world to help them build a children's and youth ministry. So without further ado, Brandon Hendricks. what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He walked in the ways of David his father. He did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. In other words, he maintained a straight line walking only in what was right in God's eyes, even though he was king and could have done whatever he wanted. And we live in a day and age where we all think that we are king or queen of our own empire and that we should have the right to do whatever we want. And what I'm suggesting, what I'm asking, is that instead of choosing what's right in our own eyes, we choose our eyes wisely. And we instead actually choose to look through God's eyes. Choose to do what's right in the eyes of the Lord, even if you could get away with choosing what's right in your own eyes. Because he was king. He literally could do whatever he wanted and couldn't get in trouble for it because he was king. He made the laws. And in our own lives, there's a lot of times where we could say, I could do this. I want to do this, in fact. And I don't think I would get caught. It's not about getting caught or not. It's about choosing the right eyes to look through. It's about saying, I don't want to do what's right in my eyes because I know what's in me. I want to do what's right in God's eyes. So if we choose our eyes wisely and we look through God's lens instead of our own, then it becomes a matter of the heart. Now we know what's right and wrong because we're choosing to adopt God's view instead of our own. But now it becomes, what are we going to do with that and in our in our culture in our society there's a pervasive lie that says follow your heart right follow your heart your heart knows the way just follow 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 and your heart will lead you but it's not true and the bible tells us it's not true jeremiah 17 9 says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick who can understand it? If, if somebody was asking you to follow a person, like, hey, let's, let's follow this person uh, towards a better life, a better career, towards the future, whatever. And you were like, oh, is, is, it, is that person trustworthy? Like, oh, no, no, so deceitful. Most of the things they say are, are complete lies. Would you be like, oh, cool, yeah, that's a great start. Oh, by the way, they're also desperately sick and perverse. How many of us would be like, oh, wow, deceitful and perverse? Definitely, sign me up. Oh, by the way, also, no one can actually understand this person at all. (laughs) Everything they say is like this one day and this other thing the next day. Would you still want to follow that person? I hope not. It would be so incredibly ignorant if you did. And yet, we still have this lie that we believe that we should follow our heart. Let our heart lead the way. In the book of uh, 1 Samuel... We have a record of of Israel's first king. His name was Saul. And Saul actually started out pretty good. And uh, he he was doing a lot of the right things, but he started seeing things through his own eyes, doing what was right in his own eyes instead of what God told him to do. 
And he started following his own heart and what he wanted instead of what God wanted. And when he let his own heart lead the way, it led him astray. So much so that in 1 Samuel 13, 13 through 14, uh, Samuel, the prophet, was talking to Saul and he says this, You have done foolishly. You have not kept the command of the Lord your God with which he commanded you. For then the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. But now your kingdom shall not continue. That's what happens when we follow our own heart. God wants good things for us. God has a plan for us. But when we adopt our own heart as our compass and our own eyes as the standard of right and wrong, God says, I can't, I can't let this continue. I can't give you the blessings I had in store for you because you're not on the right path anymore. And he says, but now your, your kingdom will not continue. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be prince over his people because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. So not only do we have to choose our eyes wisely, choose to use God's standard of right and wrong instead of what seems right in our own eyes, we also have to link our heart to God's heart. We have to say, God, not only will I put your standards of right and wrong above my own and do what you say is right instead of what I prefer to be right, I'm also going to I'm going to try to want what you want. I'm going to, I I want my heart to break for what breaks your heart, God. I don't want to just do what I want to do. I want to do what you want for me. And if you know David's story, you know that he didn't always get it right. It's not like being a, a person after God's heart means you'll never make a mistake. What it does mean is that when you come off the path a little bit, you're not just going to keep going in that direction and say, "Ah, this is what I want. The heart wants wants what the heart wants. I'm just going to go this direction that you come back onto the path and you say, God, that was was not what I should have done. That's not who I want to be because I want to link my heart to your heart. My own sin breaks my heart and I don't want to continue in it. So when we choose our eyes wisely, we let God determine right and wrong and we link our heart to God's, then we not only know what's right, we want to do what's right. And that's my hope and my prayer for you. Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. But when, you, when your heart is just your own and it's not linked to God's, then you're not guarding it. It's all out there on its own, leading the way and leading down a path that is going to take you away from God. I've seen it happen. I don't want it to happen to you. So my hope and my prayer for each and every person here is that you would choose to see through God's eyes, choose to link your heart to God's heart so that you can be on the path that he has for you and live in the promises that he wants for you. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for bringing us together today. And Lord, I pray that we would not follow the world's wisdom in doing what's right in our own eyes and following our own heart. But we would do what's right in your eyes and we would be people after your own heart. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for that beautiful word. Let's give it up for Brandon Hendricks.
that was such a beautiful message. Thank you so much for that. Um, I'm now joined with Brandon Hendricks for a short interview. So let's get into it. My first question is, tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you come to know Christ? Thanks so much, Anastasia. It's fantastic to be here with you. Uh, my journey of faith, it was a little bit of an interesting one because uh, I was raised in the church, but didn't actually walk with Jesus until my senior year of high school. Uh, so I, uh, I was forced to go to church actually every single weekend, mm -hmm. uh, but, and even midweek stuff and everything. But because my first experiences with church were so bad, uh, the first church that I remember going to as a child uh, was just so incredibly boring mm -hmm. and uh, and really didn't have anything for kids. Kids were just supposed to uh, sit in church with their parents. And uh, I thought for the longest time the entire purpose of the bulletin or program they hand you at the front door was so that parents could roll them up and whack their kids with them when they were being uh, <laughs> disruptive. And I was like, man, this church thing is just so lame. And so I made a choice as a very young child. Like, I don't know why my parents are into this, but this is not for me. And uh, so even though I was in the church, I wasn't part of the church because I was running the other way. Uh, and that was until my senior year of high school, uh, my uh, friends and I were, were driving somewhere. I was in the backseat of a car, uh, and um, the driver lost control of the car and actually rolled a couple times down an embankment, wow. landed upside down at the bottom, and uh, I broke my back. Actually, one of my vertebrae like exploded, and there were pieces of vertebrae in my spinal cord, uh, and the doctor said we can try to do surgery or we can put you in a body cast and let your body push those pieces out. Uh, and I, they said, if we do surgery, there's a chance you could end up paralyzed. And I was like, well, I don't want to take that chance. That sounds awful. So I guess put me in a body cast. So the whole last half of my senior year of high school, I spent in a body cast in a hospital bed uh, in my living room, wow. <laughs> which was so absolutely not the way I wanted to yeah. spend my senior year. Uh, and it was it was a really, really dark season in my life mm -hmm. that actually turned out to be the very best thing that could have possibly happened to me because it was during that season that I was forced to slow down enough to finally pay attention to the fact that God had been calling me, uh, trying to get a hold of me, and I was running the opposite direction. And I finally said, okay, God, if you can do anything with my wreck of a life, uh, I'm yours. And I surrendered to Jesus and uh, changed my whole career path, went into ministry, and uh, that's, that's how I came to faith. And um, now I'm married, have uh, some beautiful, amazing children, and have the incredible privilege of leading Every Generation Ministries. Wow. Thank you. That's such a beautiful story. And I think, it, I think it's totally true that a lot of times it takes rock bottom to make you realize that you are in a deep, desperation for a savior and a hope greater than yourself so that, for sure. that was a beautiful story of how you came to your faith um also this is a little bit off script um but the, just out of curiosity was your experience with church as a child did that spark your desire to specifically focus on children's ministry with every generation ministry you know i actually didn't put that together until Later, mm -hmm. uh, I had already accepted this role and stepped into this ministry, and someone asked me, uh, did you have an incredible experience at church as a child that made you want to share that experience mm -hmm. with other kids? I mean, like quite the opposite. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, wow, I never actually thought about it, but no, I had so much the opposite experience uh -huh. that I think that was part of the driving force behind uh, 
uh, mm-hmm. the passion that I have in this role. Absolutely. Even though when when the role was uh, presented to me and offered, I said no uh, unequivocally. <laughs> I was like, I don't. <laughs> I'm not that person. Uh, at the time, I was a I was a family ministries pastor at a mm-hmm. church, and just couldn't even imagine doing something different than that, mm-hmm. uh, especially such a huge role as being the president and CEO of a global ministry. Yeah. Uh, like we have national uh, partners in 16 countries around the world. And uh, and I've gotten the opportunity now to travel to all those places and meet with them and see the impact of this ministry uh, in in real life, and it blows my mind. Uh, and it, it's such such an incredible feeling to know that kids all over the world are getting the experience in church that I didn't get as a child. Yeah. And instead of making the choice I made that took me a long time for God to finally rectify, uh, they're making a choice as children to say, I belong here. This is this yeah. is my family. This is my church. This is my savior and my faith. And uh, it's it's just incredible. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's so powerful. Thank you. Um, what do you hope students take away from your message today? I mean, my my hope. I actually said it right at the end of my my message because I wanted to make it so very clear. But my my hope is that they would see the lies that our culture is presenting them with. Mm-hmm. That they are the arbiters of right and wrong. They should get to choose what's right for them, and and all of that, and ins- reject that entirely. Mm-hmm. And say, actually, you know, the Bible has something to say about that. And Mm -hmm. the people of Israel went down that path. And I know where that path leads. And it's not somewhere I want to go with my own life. uh, And instead say, I'm going to, I want to look through God's eyes. I want to do what's right in the eyes of the Lord, Mm -hmm. not what's right for me. And this, this idea of my truth has been so pervasive in our culture that yeah. it's it's just everywhere. This idea of like, well, I'm following my truth. And I just think it's such a damaging perspective because God's yeah. truth is always going to be true and right and more powerful and, and a better path than our truth will ever be. Yes. And so that's the first piece. And then the second is... Uh, the heart piece. Like mm-hmm. it's one thing to know right and wrong, and it's another to actually choose to follow that path and mm-hmm. choose to say, "I'm going to subjugate what my heart wants for yeah. the heart of God, and I want to link my heart to God's, and and actually follow what He wants for me, not just what feels right or what seems right or what I what I want or what I love or what I whatever. Mm-hmm. Like I want to I want to go where God wants me." not just follow what I want. And yeah. uh, and in fact, I didn't think of it until this very moment, but it's similar to my journey into the role that I'm in now. I didn't want mm-hmm. it. I was presented to me. I said yeah. no. And then they asked, well, would you, would you commit to pray about that uh, for a while? And then mm-hmm. we'll call you back. And it was during that time of, of really, truly praying that I felt God changing my own heart because my heart and his were not in alignment in that Mm -hmm. and once i aligned my heart with his i said man this this may not be what i want because it's big and it's scary and it's different than my goals and my plans but i now know that it's what god wants so i'm gonna do what god wants instead of what i want Mm -hmm. yeah i i really resonated with like the second part of that linking your heart to god's because Um, I've definitely been in a season of life where I've just wanted to surrender my own desires and be in step with the spirit. And it's, it's been super challenging and super Mm. hard, but, um, it's, it's a much more fulfilling way to live, to be driven by the impulse of the spirit and not the impulse of the flesh. So hundred percent. thank you for that. Um, if people want to reach out to you or if people want to connect with you, how could they do so? Uh, well, if you wanted more information about the ministry, uh, the website is egmworld.org, uh, Every Generation Ministries.
uh, world, <laughs> but it's just EGM uh, world.org. And my email address is Brandon H at EGM world.org. So B R A N D O N, the letter H, like Hendrix, <laughs> at EGM world.org. Okay, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. This episode has been a production of the Capistrano Valley Christian Schools Podcast Network. Capistrano Valley Christian Schools is a Christian JK-12 school in San Juan Capistrano, California. Be sure to check out, subscribe to, and leave a review of this show and the other shows on our network on your podcast player of choice. Doing so supports the school community in a multitude of ways. For more information about the CVCS Podcast Network or any of our other shows, check out cvcs.org or email podcasts at cvcs.org. On behalf of the whole network, this is Mr. Jasper saying thank you again for listening and stay tuned for more.